Now, I hope everyone had a great weekend because this week we are going to be crushing the online poker tables. And today I want to give you guys my best poker advice for how you could win $100 per day in the simplest way possible because we don't need to overcomplicate this, right? And um, I'm going to be breaking down another session here on Ignition. I was actually playing on the mobile app. That's what you're going to be watching here uh, recorded it was a pretty good one because, you know, we bought in for 200 bucks, got up to uh, a little bit over 500. And yeah, um, I might be doing a part two for this because, uh, yeah, we, I think we got up to like 800 bucks. It was pretty crazy. Um, but anyways, as I'm getting into, uh, you know, the advice here and how you could start making that $100 per day, um, Ignition is still one of my favorite and most reliable online poker sites to be playing on. You know, the games are fairly easy to beat here. Um, I've said it before, uh, the players are not that good. I also switched the color up to gray. Hope you guys don't mind that. I've been going between orange and blue, but today we're going to be going with the gray color. Um, so if you guys want to learn more about Ignition or get started, there will, of course, be some bonus links you can check out directly below in the description. You could also get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on hand analysis and tips to help you make more money at the tables. Don't forget to tap that like and let's get into these hands. Okay, really though, um, $100 per day, uh, the first thing you have to do is just scale back on the amount of tables you're playing. You know, it it's almost mind boggling to me at this point that people think that playing more tables is going to make you more profitable. It's just not the reality. You know, when you get up to, uh, you know, $200 cash games, um, you know, you could definitely make $100 per day just playing one table or two tables. It's, I mean, that's all you have to do, really. Obviously, there's always going to be variance involved with playing online poker or live poker, but that's not what I'm talking about. Really, the best way to, um, you know, just hit $100 per day is to look at your monthly results. So instead of checking daily results, just, you know, play whatever, 20, 30, 40 hours a week, whatever you want to play, and then see what your profit was for the month and then figure out your um, how many hours you played and really just save and analyze this information because it's going to you know help you understand, first off, if you're beating the stakes you're playing, whether it's $200 cash games or maybe something else, maybe you're playing $100 cash games. You know, I'm just at the point where I've been playing, um, you know, online poker so long that, you know, I... I can't really go lower than 200 bucks, guys, because the reality is, uh, you know, $100 cash games, $200 cash games, basically the same thing. And then when you move up to 500, it's really not that much different either. Um, but when you get up to the $1,000 cash games, the $2,000 cash games, those, you're going to find a lot of professionals playing those stakes. It's harder to get an edge in those games, if at all. Um, you're going to be in a lot of coin flip situations most of the time. And it also, you know, the higher you play online poker stakes, it does become a little bit psychological as well because you're going to be so deep um, playing in some of those games uh, that, yeah, I mean, it does get a little bit psychological. It's still fun, but um, back to the point here, $100 per day, it's not going to make you rich, but at the same time, it's a nice little side chunk of money that you could, uh, you know, start... I don't know what you want to do with it. Um, you know, uh, just save it, save it so you can move up in stakes. If you want to try to play higher stakes, maybe order some more, uh, you know, food deliveries for yourself to treat yourself. I don't know, but um, really, what I'm just getting at here, it's um, it's definitely possible to hit hundred hundred bucks per day, guys. It's really not that complicated. Okay, um, but yeah, continue sticking around with me because uh, definitely some uh, good spots in this one where, you know, we um, made some good plays. I put a couple bluffs in here too. So I, I kind of did a little bit of everything. I limped with a couple hands in early position that were like, okay. Uh, limping, it's okay to do if you're first or second to act. You just don't want to make a habit of it. I, try, I tend to do it about 10% of the hands that I play. So for the most part, you just want to stay aggressive. But, you know, I understand and you know, if you have, um, you know, uh, open first or second deck with hands like ace four suited, ace five suited, low pocket pairs, limping with those hands is okay to do every once in a while. But, you know, really just don't make a habit of it. Just at, do 10% of the hands you're playing is what, what I would, um, would go with here. Also, this session is basically condensed down from, uh, I played for maybe like an hour and 45 minutes on my phone. <clears throat> so, Definitely not bad. I mean, um, getting over 500 bucks for playing for a little bit under two hours is definitely uh, 
it's definitely a good day on the online poker tables. Okay, anyways. Okay, I just mucked that one. Really, yeah, um, no reason to continue. And just to kind of start things off here, you know, we went up a little bit, we went down a little bit, um, but I was really never down in this session at all. You know, we started with 200 bucks, kind of just climbed our way a little bit, um, putting in some good uh, value bets eventually in here too. And we, we did get paid off, which was, um, which was nice. Okay, we got three bet. It was just best to fold that one, guys. I didn't even want to, you know, get involved with it. Now, this hand was a little bit weird, and sometimes you get in spots where you could just let your opponents bet into you, and that's exactly what I did. Now, the reason I only called here was because player three was playing so tight, um, you know, basically folding everything. This guy, uh, pretty ridiculous. Now, it could have gone either way. I could have easily three bet this. I, end, I just opted to call only because this guy was playing so tight that, you know, anytime he had something, he usually had the goods. So, you know, that's just me paying attention to the opponents at the table. So instead of three betting, I just made the call here. Um, but this this hand actually worked out in my favor, I think, probably more so that I played it this way. Okay, so I just flatted, but like I said, three betting would have been completely fine too. Uh, all right, anyways, uh, seven, three, ten board, all low cards, which is a good flop for us. You know, we don't have any kings or aces out there, so... Pretty good one. Now I'm expecting him to bet clearly because he was the open raiser and he could have anything, right? He could have, uh, for all I know, pocket aces because he was playing so tight, kings, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, 10, you know, all those type of hands. But um, I just called here. Turn card was a pretty safe one as well. I think it was a seven that hit on the turn, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, the seven was a really good card for us. Unless he has eight, eight, seven. But this guy wasn't playing like that at all. Um, and he bet pretty quick here on the the, the turn, which was strange. Um, and then a seven on the uh, river, which put us in a weird spot. And he bet so big. Um, and I'm sorry, you guys couldn't see it. He ended up having queen 10, um, which... Uh, you know, uh, when he bet 47, it was weird they had a queen, right? Because I had a queen. But when he bet 47 bucks on the river, I was kind of like, what do you have? I mean, it, it was very, it was very weird. It just felt like, um, I don't know, kings, maybe pocket jacks, which I was ahead of. I don't know. It was just, it was weird. So anyways, that's how it played out. We still got paid off and, um, you know, um, if I would have come over the top right there, which which might not have been a bad idea, it was just that I was just not sure. Plus, like I said, when somebody's playing super tight, you know, um, I was actually surprised to see him have that hand, to be honest with you guys. Plus, betting so big with it. But whatever, we still won. Good to go. And, you know, basically, like, getting close to being, what, up 100 bucks in profit, not even playing that long. And, yeah, I mean, really... Like I said, you don't need to overcomplicate this at all. You know, making 100 bucks per day, it's not that tough. Plus, you know, if you're just trying to make that amount, you can just quit for the day after that, you know, and then play tomorrow. It's like, you got to look at this as a long-term thing. It's like every every day you could play online poker. You don't want to play it every day usually because you don't want to burn out. And you start to play bad too if you play like too much, you know. You got to find that sweet spot. Now, we had a monster here. I mean, this was just uh, a monster. Ten of hearts on the turn would be crazy. Getting raised here was nice, too. Um, I just called because, you know, um, I think calling's fine. 
I mean, raising is fine too, uh, but we did hit the 10. So I'll, him having hands like uh, king, queen, and because we have the, the queen so less likely. Um, some other things he could have, uh, some heart draws too. Uh, I don't know what exactly, um, but he checked, which, you know, I was kind of like, all right. Now, I could not let this go to the turn without betting, right? I mean, we have to build the pot here. Now, he's going to make the call. And fortunately for us, the board didn't pair, and it put a low card out there, which did complete a backdoor flush. But you know what? I'm not worried about the flush. I'm not putting this guy in that anyways. It wouldn't have made sense for the re-raise. So you know, on, on the flop. So really what I'm thinking here is maybe two pair. I could see two pair, you know, like, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe like ace 10, ace eight, those type of hands I'm targeting when I make this bet. And really what I'm trying to do here is make my hand look like a bluff, like I missed something. And then he's going to have a hand which he, you know, couldn't get away from. Unfortunately for us, we didn't get paid off there. But but still, we, I mean, we took down a nice pot. We didn't get all of it, which would have been awesome, um, you know. So so he might have just had a misdraw too with the, the hearts, possibly. But if he didn't have two pair there, obviously he, he didn't have a strong enough hand to make the call, unfortunately for us. Okay, and then, um, you know, I think we hit, oh, we hit, like, bottom pair with this hand. Oh, I'm sorry, we had no action on that one. Okay, but we do have a hand you guys don't want to miss coming up, which was uh, pretty crazy. Okay, um, not much else you can say about this except, wow. Uh, you know, we, so, so we flopped the full house. You know, the only way this hand gets better is if we hit a nine on the turn, which would be fantastic. I mean, that would be awesome. All right, so it's also nice when you get somebody betting into you, um, you know, and I, I think slow playing is fine here. I raising, I think raising would would have got him off the hand. Unfortunately for us, it, it really wasn't going to make a difference. We weren't going to really make anything on this, and I mean, what am I, what am I targeting here? You know, I think he's only making a call here if he's got a pocket pair that beats the board. Um, other than that, though, like it's probably a fold, especially if he's got hands like any ace. Unless he thinks I'm bluffing, but I don't think that he thought I was bluffing. Uh, and unfortunately, we're just not gonna we're not gonna really get anything off this. But still, um, it's always nice to flop something like that, right? Pretty ridiculous. Another hand where we hit a really good turn card. Um, and I was protecting with, you know, a, a hand that not very great, but it is suited. Plus we're in the big blind. And I always recommend when you have hands like this and you're in the big blind, you might as well defend, you know, you never know. Cause like, even if you're up against, you know, ace king or aces or kings, you know, you could still outflop somebody. I mean, it's, it's very possible. It happens all the time. And for us, um, in this spot, we are going to hit a second pair but it's really the turn that gave us the goods. Plus, we also had some runner, runner, flush possibilities, running straight draws, you know, depending on what the turn and what happens on the turn. But when we hit the six on the turn, I was like, oof, that was nice. That was very lucky. Now I'm just hoping somebody has a pair or really just tries to bluff at it, maybe, or hits like an ace or a king on the river, you know, something like that, where they're going to make a call, anyways. 
but not a, a ton in this hand as far as like money. Um, I put in a bet here. I don't think we got called, but I, you know, I had to bet. Obviously, I couldn't just let this <laughs> let this go. And I bet, um, I guess maybe trying to make it look like a bluff, hoping somebody would make a call. But you know, once again, did not get anything. Very frustrating to have you know those uh, two hands back to back and not get paid anything. But it is what it is. All right, and then we're in the small blind, and yeah, I think right after this hand, we've got the uh, the big hand that was pretty insane, pretty insane for sure. And it was just kind of like a cooler spot, the, ne the next one you're going to watch here, the next hand. I mean, anybody's going to get stacked in this situation. It's just, uh, it's tough, man. All right, so I defended here. You could make the argument for maybe three betting, but all right. So unfortunately for us, we are gonna go with a uh, a bluff here. Um, this guy. <sighs> Yeah, this guy's going to call us down. We're going to lose his hand. I don't know if it was better to check here or not. You know, I, I don't know. But I, I went for it anyways, and he's going to make a really good call with uh, pocket eights. Ooh, that was nice, right? Good call. Good call, buddy. And I'm sorry, it's it's the hand after this. We had this ace four, which we were in the big blind with. We just defended. But the, the big hand that kind of just put us over 500 bucks is coming up right after this. But if there's one thing that you guys um, hopefully get from watching this uh, this update, you know, to, to, to kick things off this week, it's just that, like, maybe scale back on the amount of tables you're playing with online poker and just start focusing on just, like, one or two. I mean, it's really not that hard. It's just when you focus, it's like you can open up your game so much more. You could start bluffing people. You could start picking up on those little tells. You know, are they betting too quick? Did they take too long to bet? Do they have that uh, check fold button on? There's all that little nuance to this. And people don't realize that, but it, it's the truth. You can't just play robotic. You know, you can't just like, you just can't, you know. It just doesn't work. Okay, so this was just, um, like I said, a cooler situation. We've got pocket aids. Um, and we're going to end up getting it all in against another player on the flop. Crazy stuff. I slowed it down so we could kind of just break it down. And we are going to hit top set here, but there were just too many draws out there that, you know, um, and when you're dealing with somebody being aggressive on it, it's like, okay, we're just going to get it all in, you know. And if you, you know, hit your straight, on the uh, turn or your flush on the Turner River, it is what it is. I mean, because we're always all in here. But I'm not going to lie. I was shocked at this hand. I was absolutely shocked at what this player is going to have. I was kind of like, are you kidding me, man? Like, I, I felt bad. I was like, let me give you your money back, you know, <laughs> but not really. And I, I just, I couldn't see the call here. I just felt like if this guy's going to do this, then I mean, yeah, let's just, let's get it all in right here. What is he representing? Five, six, um, or maybe ace five of uh, spades, which would be a monster hand too. Um, but here we go. You're not going to believe this, guys. Crazy. 
Now there was a chance of being a split pot there with a, a if a, what a five would have hit. Um, <laughs> which, would, oh my God, that would have been terrible. But um, we took down a nice one there. That was just a cooler situation. And uh, fortunately for us, yeah, um, we, we won a big one. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed another session here on Ignition. Like I said, if you um, made it to the end, tap that like, um, subscribe for more uh, poker videos. Get on that newsletter, guys. It's once a week, just, you know, tips, uh, hand analysis, just a Help you make more money at the tables. That's what it's all about. All right. Thanks for watching this, guys. We'll see you all in the next poker video.